Good morning. Today we're celebrating the second Sunday after the Epiphany. We'll follow the order of service printed in our bulletin. <clears throat> we're receiving two offerings today, the traditional offering as well as the noisy offering. So if you have some change rattling around in your purse or pockets, you can uh, throw them in the kettle out there on the table in the narthex. We'll turn to our opening hymn, O Morning Star, How Fair and Bright. and sing this one a cappella and then we'll try to get the uh, the electronic organ to work oh morning star how fair and bright you shine with god's own truth and light a glow with grace and mercy of Jacob's race, King David's son, our Lord and Master, you have won our hearts to serve you only. Lowly, holy, great and glorious, all victorious, rich in blessing, Rule and might or all possessing. Come, heavenly bridegroom, light divine, and deep within our hearts now shine, their light of flame undying. In your one body let us be as living branches of a tree. Your life our lives supplying. Now though daily earth's deep sadness may perplex us and distress us, Yet with heavenly joy you bless us. Lord, when you look on us in love, at once there falls from God above a ray of purest pleasure. Your word and spirit, flesh and blood, refresh our souls with heavenly food. You are our dearest treasure. Let your mercy warm and cheer us, so draw near us, for you teach us. God's own love through you has reached us. Almighty Father, in your Son, you loved us when not yet begun was this old earth's foundation. Your Son has ransomed us in love 
to live in him here and above. This is your great salvation. Alleluia. Christ the living to us, giving life forever, keeps us yours and fails us never. Oh, let the harps break forth in sound, our joy be all with music crowned, our voices gladly blending. For Christ goes with us all the way, today, tomorrow, every day. His love is never ending. Sing out, sing out, jubilation, exultation, tell the story. Great is he, the King of glory. What joy to know when life is past, the Lord we love is first and last, the end and the beginning. He will one day, O oh, glorious grace, transport us to that happy place beyond all tears and sinning. Amen, amen. Come, Lord Jesus, crown of gladness, we are yearning. For the day of your returning. Are we good to go now? All right. So we'll turn to the order of matins. I invite you to stand. O oh Lord, open my lips. So I think that was Matins 2. We want Matins 1. Somebody must have been on vacation the last couple of weeks. <laughs> hmm. There we go. All right. Oh, Lord, open my lips. Make haste, O oh God, to deliver me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ. Alleluia. Blessed be God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. 
For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. The deep places of the earth are in his hand. The strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. Blessed be God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And our psalm is Psalm 128, as printed. We'll read this responsibly. Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in his way. Your, your wife will be like a fruitful vine within your house. Your children will be like olive shoots around your table. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading is from Isaiah, chapter 62, verses 1 through 5. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake, I will not be quiet, until her righteousness goes forth as brightness, and her salvation as a burning torch. The nations shall see your brightness, and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the land of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no more be termed forsaken, and your land shall no more be termed desolate. But you shall be called, My delight is in her, and your land married. For the Lord delights in you, and your land shall be married. For as a young man marries a young woman, so shall your sons marry you. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 through 11. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers, so this be the next one. I do Madden's not want you to be uninformed. Sorry. You know that when you were pagans, you were led astray to mute idols. However, you were led. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking in the Spirit of God ever says, Jesus is accursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except in the Holy Spirit. Now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who empowers them all and every one. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. For to one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge, according to the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another the working of miracles. To another prophecy. To another the ability to distinguish between spirits, and to another various kinds of tongues to another the interpretation of tongues. 
All these are empowered by one and the same Spirit, who apportions to each one individually as he wills. This is the word of the Lord. We stand for the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the second chapter. On the third day, there was a wedding at Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus also was invited to the wedding with his disciples. When the wine ran out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what does this have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now there were six stone water jars there for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding twenty or thirty gallons. Jesus said to the servants, Fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the master of the feast. So they took it. When the master of the feast tasted the water, now become wine, and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the master of the feast called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and when people have drunk freely, then the poor wine. But you have kept the good wine until now. This, the first of his signs, Jesus did at Cana in Galilee and manifested his glory, and his disciples believed in him. This is the gospel of the Lord. We continue with the responsory. place where your glory dwells. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. We sing our next hymn. You may be seated. Join in Cana's feast, where Christ is honored guest. He welcomes all who come to taste the wine his hands have blessed. The old wine now is gone from jars that stand apart. No longer can it satisfy the yearning, trusting heart. But Christ, the Word made flesh, bids water turn to wine. He fills our empty cups again with grace and truth divine. Come, friends, and share the feast. Here drink the wine supplied. 
by him who is both guest and host for us, the crucified. For now he lives and reigns through all eternity with Father, Spirit, three in one. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text is the Holy Gospel appointed for today from John chapter 2, especially these words. This, the first of his signs, Jesus did at Cana in Galilee and manifested his glory and his disciples believed in him. This is the text. You may be seated. Our text is the story of Jesus' very first miracle, as it says in John chapter 2, when he changed water into wine at a wedding in the town of Cana of Galilee. Now, who's ever heard of Cana of Galilee? No one. It's a small town. It reminds us of the fact that Jesus was born in another small town, a town by the name of Bethlehem, another town hardly anyone had ever heard of. So his first miracle was done in an obscure village, not in a big city. Jesus knew that eventually word of him would filter up to the highest levels of power. But he, in his ministry, focused on those who were poor and lowly as he attended this wedding in this small little town of Galilee. As it says, there was a marriage, but we don't hear anything about the marriage. The only thing we hear about is the party that happened afterwards where they ran out of wine. But if we do want to read about a wedding, we can look at our Old Testament reading for today. There a beautiful wedding is described. Listen again to the words of Isaiah describing this wedding. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord, a royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no more be termed forsaken, and your land shall no more be termed desolate. But you shall be called, My delight is in her, and your land shall be married. For as a young man marries a young woman, so shall your sons marry you. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. He's talking about us. We are the bride of Christ. Jesus is the bridegroom. And he came to this earth and he suffered for us on the cross and died so that we might be his. This was not a marriage of equals. It was a marriage of us who were totally helpless, as Isaiah says, desolate, forsaken, and Jesus, the bridegroom, came and adopted us and won us as his beloved bride. And so we are, as Isaiah says, a royal diadem in the hand of our God, and he rejoices over us as, as his beloved bride. So then getting back to the party, as it says, when they ran out of wine, Mary stepped forward and told Jesus about this. Seems to indicate then that the wedding involved some close relatives. We don't know who it would have been, but why else would Jesus and his mother be concerned about a shortage of wine at the party? Since Jesus had not done any miracles yet, scholars wonder if Mary was expecting Jesus to do a miracle or just in some other way provide the party with more wine. No one knows. What we do know is that Mary makes Jesus aware of the need, but does not prescribe to him how he is to help with it. And that is a very good attitude for us when we pray. We need to let God know our needs and then let him decide how to answer our prayers. Paul speaks of this in Philippians chapter 4. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and petition, let your requests be made known to God. That's what happens when you present your request to God and don't 
dictate to him how he has to answer. If you try to dictate to him how the answer should go, then you are going to be anxious. You are going to be worried. But as Paul says, be anxious for nothing, but let your request be made known to God and leave it to him to decide how to answer. That's what Mary did. She presented the problem to Jesus and then let him take it from there. Jesus answered to his mother and said, Woman, what does this have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. Thus the one who is eternal, namely Jesus, waits for the right hour to do his miracle. As one scholar has put it, everything God does, whether it's pertaining to our salvation of the world and all world events, or the first miracle of Jesus, or even in our own lives, everything happens in God's time. And then as the scholar adds, God's time is always the fittest time. God's time is always the best time for things to happen. And that's exactly what took place here in this wedding. Jesus then finally acted in God's time, and that was the best time. Some have wondered if the reason Jesus said, my time has not yet come, is because word had not gotten out yet among the guests that they were running out of wine, that only just a few people, uh, the inner circle, the family members, and maybe the master of the feast knew about this shortage of wine, but the word had not gotten out yet. And so maybe Jesus was waiting for that word to get out as inevitably it would, because word travels fast, especially if there's some kind of bad news. And so Jesus was just waiting for everyone to find out there's no more wine and a little bit of panic to set in, because that's the way he often acts in our own lives too. In many cases, the time for Jesus to act is the time when all of our human solutions are gone. Our faith comes into the clearest focus when we realize that our own efforts have failed and the only hope we have is for God to intervene. And so perhaps that's what Jesus was waiting for, waiting for everyone to realize this is truly a desperate situation. We can't do anything on our own. Someone else needs to intervene. So then we go to the water pots that were there, each containing 20 to 30 gallons of water. When was the last time you went to a wedding and there were stone jars there for purification rites? Probably never. But that was the way it was done in those days. The Jewish people had many, many ceremonial washings that they had to do, not just for weddings, but for many other occasions. Now in the New Testament, since Jesus has come, we are purified by his blood that he shed for us on the cross. And we are purified by being baptized into his death and resurrection. We are purified whenever we partake of his Lord's Supper and receive the body and blood of Jesus in his sacrament. That is now how we're purified, not by ceremonial water that is collected and used at different occasions. So they filled the jars with water. Jesus said simply take some out and take it to the master of the feast. This miracle happened very unceremoniously. All they did was draw the water out and take it to the master of the feast and it became wine. Jesus never even touched it in any way, just told them what to do. Now the miracle involved a gift of wine, as someone has pointed out, because Jesus knew the gift would be used. This was a gift Jesus gave the wedding couple that he knew they wouldn't return at their earliest convenience, as so often happens with wedding gifts. No, Jesus knew this gift of wine would be a gift that would be used. So too with all of God's gifts. As Paul says in the, in the epistle reading for today from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, he talks about the gifts of the Spirit, and those gifts are to be used as well. Listen again to the list of those gifts. Some have the gift of wisdom. Some have the gift of knowledge. Some have the gift of healing. Others the gift of miracles. Others the gift of prophecy. Others the gift of discerning of spirits. Another the gift of various kinds of tongues or languages. And others the interpretation of tongues. And there's other gifts listed in other parts of scripture. Paul clearly says, to each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. 
the gifts that God gives, like the wine that Jesus provided at the wedding, and like the spiritual gifts that he gives through his Holy Spirit, are meant to be used to build up the body of Christ. And notice in, in the epistle reading how the Trinity is mentioned in the, in the mentioning of these gifts. As Paul writes, there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit, the Holy Spirit. There are varieties of service, but the same Lord, which typically refers to Jesus. And then there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God, God the Father, who empowers them all in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. Every one of us has been given a gift from the Spirit. And just as that wine was meant to be consumed, we are meant to use that gift for the benefit of God's people in his kingdom. Now, once the wine had been created, Jesus could have just had the servants start serving the wine. Instead, Jesus sends the wine to the master of the feast. The master of the feast has an important job. He is to make sure that every guest has enough and that no guest gets too much. He is also to make sure that there are no indecencies or disorders. The master of the feast then tasted the wine and proclaims that it is better than the previous wine. And then, we assume so, he then had it distributed to all of the guests. This is somewhat like what Jesus does with pastors. Jesus could easily send out the gospel without using any pastors whatsoever. He could. But instead, he chooses to use pastors to send out the gospel. And the main qualification of a pastor is first to taste the gospel. That is, to experience the gospel in his own life and know that it is far better than anything else God has given us, anything else that came before, and I can assure you it is, the sweet gospel of Jesus Christ that has been entrusted to me to proclaim to you is better than anything God has sent us before and he has called me to share that with you and make sure everyone gets the right amount. Everyone knows about this. That is how God has chosen then to distribute this precious gift of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the forgiveness, life, and salvation that are his through his holy and precious name. So this is the first miracle of Jesus through which he manifested his glory his epiphany glory in a very earthly way. His disciples put their trust in him and believed in him, which is in, in the end the whole goal, God's goal for all of us, to put our trust in Jesus, to trust in him, to know that through the death and resurrection of Jesus, we have become his precious bride and he rejoices over us just as a bridegroom rejoices over his bride and that he has entrusted us with gifts that he wants us to use in his kingdom. Every one of us has a gift. And then to rejoice in that great salvation that he has given us, to come regularly to hear about it and serve him with the gifts he gives. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. and we receive the offering. Continue as we join in singing the Te Deum. I invite you to stand.
All the earth now worships you, the Father everlasting. To you all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To you cherubim and seraphim continually do cry. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of the majesty of your glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise you. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise you. The noble army of martyrs praise you. The Holy Church throughout all the world does acknowledge you. The Father of an infinite majesty, your adorable, true, and only Son. Also the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. You are the King of glory, O Christ. You are the everlasting Son of the Father. When you took upon yourself to deliver man, you humbled yourself to be born of a virgin. When you had overcome the sharpness of death, you opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. We therefore pray you to help us in the glory of the Father. We believe that you will come to be our judge. We therefore pray you to help your servants whom you have redeemed with your precious blood. Make them to be numbered with your saints in glory everlasting. In our special prayers today, we'll include a prayer for the family of Dennis Hank Reimhelt, who passed away on Friday. Hank will receive Christian burial here at Redeemer this Friday at 1 p.m. Our prayers begin as we join in saying the Kyrie followed by the Lord's Prayer. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, who governs all things in heaven and on earth, Mercifully hear the prayers of your people and grant us your peace through all our days. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Almighty and everlasting God, you made known the coming of your Son to the wise men of the East by a wonderful star. We praise you for your mercy and surpassing love in granting us a ransom for our sins. We praise you that the light from on high has visited us to enlighten those who sit in darkness, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Lord, in your mercy. We praise you that you have prepared your salvation before the face of all people, and have brought us into the fellowship of your beloved Son, so that we are no longer strangers and foreigners, but partakers of your grace, members of your household, and heirs of your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. So now let us evermore follow the shining star of your holy word, that we may know you and worship you and present ourselves worthily to you always. Lord, in your mercy, enable us to offer up to you the gold of faith, the incense of prayer, and the myrrh of repentance. Teach us to do your will, serving you all our days, doing good to all people, 
Lord, in your mercy. Graciously defend our country and her people, our government and our whole Christian church. Bless all honest labor and preserve us from sickness, discontent, and all other calamities. Visit the afflicted, the sick, and the dying with your heavenly consolation. Preserve our children and grant to all parents wisdom and justice. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, you are the maker of heaven and earth and the giver of life. We thank you for all the mercies granted to Hank Raimhelt during his earthly life, especially for calling him to faith in Jesus. Comfort those who mourn his death with the hope of the glorious resurrection and a joyful reunion in heaven. Help us remember that we are mortal so that we will always be prepared to fall asleep in faith and so receive the glory promised to all who trust in Jesus Lord, in your mercy. And when our last hour comes, preserve us in the one true faith and receive us into the land of eternal rest, where with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we will magnify your glorious name forever. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, our heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings being ordered by your governance may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. gladness men of old did the guiding star behold as with joy they hailed its light leading onward beaming bright so most gracious lord may we evermore be led by thee As with joyful steps they sped, Savior to thy lowly bed, there to bend the knee before thee whom heaven and earth adore. So may we with willing feet ever seek thy mercy seat. As they offered gifts most rare At thy cradle rude and bare So may we with holy joy Pure and free from sin's alloy All our costliest treasures bring Christ to thee, our heavenly King Holy Jesus, every day keep us in the narrow way. And when earthly things are past, bring our ransomed souls at last. Where they need no star to guide, where no clouds thy glory hide. In the heavenly country bright Need they no created light 
Thou its light, its joy, its crown. Thou its sun, which goes not down. Therefore ever may we sing Alleluia's to our King. Please be seated. So we're off to a great start with Epiphany, the first miracle of Jesus. Many more to come, as you all know. He did manifested his glory in so many ways. And that's what we focus on during the Epiphany season. God could have chosen to reveal his glory in any way he wanted to, but he chose instead to reveal his glory to us through the humanity of Jesus, through his human nature. God is now revealing his glory to us through the humanity of Jesus, and he's fully revealing his glory to us through the humanity of Jesus, not holding anything back. That's what Epiphany means, and that's why Epiphany is such a big deal. And we get to be a part of it as the bride of Christ. He is our bridegroom, and we are his very precious bride. 